In this video, we build a badass wood stove out of a 275 gallon fuel tank. Thank you for watching the TDC Heart Rods YouTube channel. Hi guys, so today um, I decided, well, not today, a little while ago, I decided that I wanted to put a wood burning stove in my shop, uh, the new shop, along with natural gas. I don't currently have the natural gas in here, but I need the natural gas to keep my paint supplies good. So like when I leave town or whatever, I can just keep the temperature at 50 or 55 degrees. But I really wanted a large wood burning stove that I can put lots of wood in it, keep it um, going for a long period of time. Um, anyways, and I wanted a big one. So here is what I come up with. We're gonna start building it uh, today and um, I'll show you what I got. So I think it's like 275 gallon maybe, 250, 225, 300. I don't really know what it is, but it's an old um, fuel tank for like a furnace for like in, a, in an old house. So it is five foot long. I don't know. I would say this is probably four-ish, four-ish foot tall. And anyways, a couple feet wide. So my thought is, I actually, I want it a little bit higher off the ground. So I think I'll extend the legs out and then cut a hole in the front here. And then on the top, I'll put a whole bunch of pieces of pipe through there. And, uh, make it so then it'll I can put a fan at the back and blow all the heat out and then I'm gonna put it over there in that corner that has a whole bunch of stuff I'm gonna put it there with the chimney going straight out the roof so I'm gonna go look around and see what what metal I have and stuff like that to decide exactly how I'm gonna get this thing just a little bit farther off the ground like it it's not too low, but I would like it just a little bit higher. Plus, I've looked at some different insurance stuff just for like wood burning stoves in shops and insurance reasons. They usually want the stove like 14 inches off the ground. I don't know that I'm gonna make it that high, mostly cause, yeah, anyways, I don't know I'm gonna make it that high, but I do definitely want it higher just so I don't have to bend over to shove as much wood in there. It would be sweet if it was just a little bit higher. So I'm gonna go uh, look around and see if I can come up with something to get this thing up a little bit higher off the ground. All right, so this is the corner that I wanna put the stove in and I've been playing around with different ways of how I might want it. Like just like it is or in the corner. So it's kind of pointing this towards me. Well, I think I'm going to leave it just like it is right there. Because this bay here where this T-bird is, is going to be the bay that I use the most. Like that one's going to get used a lot too. But this one will get used the most. And I don't want it always pointing right towards the car. So I think I'm going to put it right in that area. And I want the bottom of the... What I'm going to do is put a big door in it, but I think I want the bottom of the door like right here. And I'm gonna fill this bottom here with sand and then put fire brick over the top of it so it won't burn the bottom of it out. And I want a nice, very large door. So that being said, I did some measuring and I wanna lift it up about 10 more inches from where it is. Well, I started looking around, I have some tube that's just about the same size as those legs there. So I'm gonna add 10 inches to the bottom of those legs and then put some cross pieces in there to make sure that it is nice and strong and doesn't try to walk out from under it. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna get started on is extending those legs.
Well, I like that a lot better, so much better. I'm still gonna add some braces. Let's see if I can do this on camera. So, if you guys can see that. So it definitely needs some extra strength there. So I think I'll go from up here, down, and vice versa, do an X on them. And then I think that'll be plenty strong. <clears throat> and then I decided how big I want my door there. It's a pretty darn big door. Um, that way I can put fire brick. I'll have a little, a lip like this, this tall, I don't know, that tall, that all the ashes can sit in. And then there'll be fire brick underneath that. And underneath that, I'll fill this part with sand. But I think you can see the black line there. I think that'll be a nice, very nice size. And then we'll put a whole bunch of pipes in the top here. But I'm gonna hook a vacuum up to this hole here so then this tank doesn't build pressure it did have fuel in it it was like fuel oil that was super old we tried lighting the fuel oil on fire and it did but it it's not very flammable but just for some good precaution i'm gonna duct tape my big old shop back to that and uh get to cutting that hole out Voila, got some hinges put on there. Got a hole cut in it, super awesome. This baby's in really good shape on the inside, which it should be, cause it's been, had fuel in it for a long time. But I did notice up here, not the, oh, what we got? This bad boy was made 1968. Pretty cool, manufactured by Eaton. Anyways, I gotta cut that up, which is kind of a bummer because that's where the exhaust is going. But, so my next step will be, I, now that I got some hinges on here, I got some, I think that's three quarter, maybe it's half inch square tubing, and then some one inch. And I'm gonna take the half inch and put out here and follow all the way around the door. And then as long as I have enough of it, I'm gonna put an X in the middle so then that door will be nice and strong. And hopefully it doesn't warp. It may still warp. I don't know, I don't think it will. And then the bigger stuff is gonna go on the inside here. Ah! It's hard to do with one hand. Uh, on the inside here like so, I'm gonna leave just a little bit of overlap so then the door has something to shut to. I'm gonna go all the way around there. So then it's got something to shut against and so the door is nice and strong. So I'm gonna get to it. I took that, um, oh my gosh, square tubing and got it all welded in here. It's much, much stronger and looks a lot nicer. So now I, oh, I see, now that I'm staring at the camera, I need to weld that up. But now I'm gonna take some of this square tubing, this half by half square tubing and go all the way around the door and 
I thought I had enough, but I don't think I have enough. But if I do, I'm gonna put an X in the middle to make it a lot stronger. Cause I definitely don't think this will hold up to any kind of heat by itself. So I need to add some strength around it. So I'm gonna go cut all these pieces down and uh, get to welding. Ta-da! So, we got all the square tubing welded in, welded in, which I'm super glad I did. It, the metal did exactly what I thought. As soon as I started welding this around here, this started warping. So I knew that any kind of heat in here, which this thing should produce some good heat, is gonna warp that without these. So, I got the square tubing put in there and then I added some X braces to the bottom and now it don't move at all. Well, I guess it barely, barely does. The floor must be a tiny bit uneven or my legs, but that's barely, like, barely, barely. Anyways, so my next step is going to be to porch out all these holes. So then I can weld this pipe in there. But um, I need to go get some other pipe because I only have enough for those. And I would like to put some, like maybe one here, here, there, and there. So like five more. Um, yeah, I think that'd be awesome. That way this whole area would be just lots and lots of heat. Um, also, I was thinking about it, I need to build some kind of dampener in this area, or in these. Anyways, I'm gonna build a, not a dampener, a vent. I'm gonna build an air vent somewhere in that area. I also kind of thought about coming in here and plumbing it outside to like fresh air, but I'm not really sure about that. I don't know that I want to cut another hole in my building, but yeah, anyways. So I'm going to cut these bad boys out so I can get some tubes put in there. Well guys, it's coming along nice. So I got all my pipes, all the holes cut out and pipes welded in there. Um, I did, so these four here are all, the, the outside diameter of all of these are the same, but these one, this one and this one is actual drill stem. So it's quite a lot thicker and after seeing how thick those are, I kind of wish these ones were thicker. Um, I think this might take longer to heat up, but it'll hold the heat a lot better. And obviously it'll hold up for a longer period of time, but we'll see how well it works out. I think it'll work out fantastic. And then I got my eight inch pipe there for the chimney. And then I started, let me push some stuff out of the way here to work on one of the dampeners. There's gonna be three of them. So what I'm doing here is I took some of this half inch square tubing and I cut it, let's see. So the top here is shorter than that, this, the, the lower, and then the back side's completely gone. And the point of that is, turn this over, so, Put it like this, weld it up in place, and, it, and this piece, as you can see, can still move. And then we'll take this piece of square tubing, have a nice little gap behind it, not very big at all, and then we'll weld it in place 
and then weld a nut, I mean a bolt to the tip here, so then we can just open and close the dampener however much we would like. And then down here at the bottom, I have two more pieces and another piece of flat stock. The flat stock's not gonna stay this big, it's gonna get cut down into two. But I'm gonna do the same thing as this with these two longer pieces. And I'm gonna weld one up here and one down here. And that same, this longer stick here, this is 3 sixteenths, three inch wide, 3 sixteenths thick flat stock. So it's gonna get cut in half and it'll have big oval holes here and here with the piece of square tubing welded top and bottom so that I can just slide the two dampeners in separately. I want to be able to have them separate. So then I'll be air space for three different spots on the front. I think that will provide enough air and it's at least gonna provide as much air. Like the chamber is big and that's eight inch. So yes, really the chamber probably needs a little bit more maybe like two eight inch stacks there to be able to really heat this as much as the amount of airspace that's in there, but that's not what I'm looking for. I want lots of heat, which I know it will get for sure. I also want it to burn slow and hot. So we don't want the air leaving or coming in too fast because then it'll just burn up real quick. But yeah, anyways, so that's what I'm working on now are the dampeners. This thing is almost finished. The only thing else I should really have to do is I'd like to paint it. And I need to add a, oops, I need to add a latch here to be able to shut the door. Um, but I am very, very close. So that's what I'm gonna get to. I'm gonna get to uh, putting that bad boy all together. I think that will work just fine. They move nice and smooth. They move nice and smooth. I think it looks awesome. I think it looks super awesome. So now I need to build something to hold the door close. So my thought was take a wrench, drill a hole down here, take a bolt, put the bolt through the wrench, drill the hole all the way through the door, slide it in to give it uh, the amount of play that I want, and then weld the back side of the bolt to the back side of the door. So then that's the pivot here for the, for the wrench. And then have another bolt that is welded to this and then catches on the edge here. Uh, yeah, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and build it and then I'll show it better after it's built. I think it'll turn out super sweet. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get to build in my wrench. I mean, my, my latch. Ta -da! So now you can see how I did that. I, so I just drilled a hole through there and then all the way through the door, welded it on the back side, So it'll pivot. And then I ground down right here and then welded this bolt in, so then when you close it, it just latches like that on the back side. And it works great. Also, I got my fan mounted up. It got really cold and I needed heat like right then. So I was like, screw it, I'll just go ahead and start a fire in it. Well, then I decided might as well use it a bunch so I can give an honest opinion on it. So I've been using it for a week now <laughs> and this thing is phenomenal. Like I was going to put more holes up in here. I'm not going to like you guys, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Like, I'm going like this if you can hear 
This fan moves some serious amount of air, awesome amount of air through those tubes. And let's open this so it doesn't get too smoky. That thing will hold some serious amount of wood. So, got the handle made, got the chimney done, got some insulated board there. I need to put, I'm going to put some cement board. This is already like fire retardant board. I'm gonna put cement board up and then tin up after that. Um, and then it'll be plenty heat resistant. Um, but yeah, this thing works phenomenal. It is like my shop is 30 by 80. Um, and these doors have zero insulation in them. And I've I t just this morning, just this morning, I, uh, made an oops. I lit a fire. I packed it full of wood, lit a fire, had all the dampeners open, was back over here, uh, working on a truck, putting some door hinges on it and was getting kind of frustrated. And so I wasn't paying it. I totally forgot about shutting the dampers down to t tame the fire down. It was 22 degrees outside and 100 degrees in here. I was just, oh, it was so hot. But anyways, I'm just saying, this thing works for not absolutely the best heater wood stove I've ever seen or used in a shop. I've seen some big, awesome ones. This thing takes the cake for sure. I love it. But anyways, so now that I've used it enough, I've burned all the, all the paint and baked it enough that um, I'm going to wait until it's just a little bit warmer day, like even up into the mid thirties to 40 degree. And then I'm going to take a wire brush to the whole thing and paint it all black. Um, I think it would look awesome black with the nice tin on the backside. Um, yeah, anyways, so I will finish this video out when I do that. Well, there's the finished product. So, on the wall, I got cement board and this pretty tin, which is super awesome if we stand back. I really like how that looks a whole lot. Um, so as you can see, I went ahead and painted the side of it. Well, I'm as I'm painting it, I stop and I was gonna paint the front separate and then I decided I'm not even gonna paint the front. I absolutely love how it looks. It just looks, very rustic and then how I put the stitch welds and the cross and just everything about it the blue and the purple I just think it looks super super awesome and like right as you can see right now I got another fire going in there and this thing by far is the best wood stove I have ever been around and I've been around a ton of them just because where we live lots and lots of people have wood stoves but this thing is absolutely phenomenal um, so one other thing I'm going to do is I would talk to my heating and AC guy that I'm buddies with, and he said that I can actually hook the fan up to a thermostat. So I'm probably going to put a thermostat back over there somewhere and hook the fan up to that. So it'll kick on and off just to help control the temperature here. Cause I can, in the morning time, I can chuck this thing full of wood turn the dampeners way down and the vents and that's seven o'clock in the morning or so and I don't even have to touch it again until like five o'clock in the afternoon the thing is an absolute animal I absolutely love it super glad I built it um, hope this will kind of motivate somebody else to build one similar to it if they have an idea on um, using just an old fuel tank. That's all this is, just an old 275 gallon fuel tank. And the thing is an absolute beast. Um, anyways, that's gonna be the end of it. The stove is done and working. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now. Like I said before, I absolutely love it. Um, and uh, please don't forget to subscribe and um, we'll see you on the next one.